Hello, welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today I'm doing something that's a bit out of necessity. My house is very humid, we make a lot of stocks and soups and various things and that mixing with laser and laser wood tends to make a lot of moisture in the wood and I'm finding that there's a lot more resins and smokes and sort of uh, issues with the wood that isn't there when the wood's brand new. So I'm assuming it's the moisture. Uh, I could be completely wrong and I could be something completely different. But what I'd like to do is rather than making something that uses chemicals to take moisture out like silica gel or, you know, cat litter or something, I would like to make something that will remove um, all of the moisture I can out of some wood and then I can use that wood and then just place more wood in it and it just so I've always got a constant supply of dry wood if this works. All right, I'll show you through what bits and bobs I've got and if it works, brilliant, you can follow along and do a similar thing. This is all prototype stage. It will look rubbish, but hopefully work well. Otherwise it will look rubbish and work rubbish. Let's get on with it. So the first thing I needed was a box that was big enough to fit the wood I use, which is A4, 3mm, this is MDF, but you know, obviously it doesn't matter what type of wood, but A4, and if you have a look, it, you know, it's got quite a bit of room. Second thing I, I needed was a little rack, which I've come up with here, and all this does is it sits in there like so, and you can place whatever wood you want to dry in it like you would, you know, the dishes in a rack on your draining board. Um, I can't remember how many this fits in, it's about 20 I think, or not. Count them, they're all there. Okay, so those two bits are basically made from scrap, a box I'd found, and this, and also this. This is a, um, a fan from an old laptop, an old 18650 battery also from an old laptop. And then these things you'll have to pay for if you don't have lying around. This is a heat map for a fish tank or, you know, aquarium or whatever. This one was the cheapest one I could find, but it also had a, th a thermostat on it, so I can regulate the temperature if that becomes something that would be useful for this project. I'm not sure it will, I will probably just have it on full blast, but we'll see. And a little hydrometer. I chose a round one because I thought I could make it look pretty cool. The next thing I've done is cut a box with two holes in. Now this hole here was already there from a few, uh, past project that didn't work. Not a future one, that sounds a bit bonkers. And so this hole is then for the hydrometer. And then I've made another hole for the fan. Now the idea is, you plonk your wood in here that you want drying out. You shove your heat mat underneath on full power so that this area starts to get hot. And it brings up the humidity within the box and this whole thing is closed off. Then when the humidity is up to a certain amount and all the all the moisture is coming out of the wood, you turn the fan on and it sucks all the air, um, all of the, the moist air out. That's the plan, that's the idea. Now I have done a few little bits and bobs. I made a little doohicker for the fan or uh, for the Doer. I'm not sure what for, not sure if I need it. I've also made a round one. Don't know if I need it, I just made them. So basically, if I decide that this box here is good enough, this lid, sorry, is a bit good enough, then I'll cut it to the right size and I'll make it look a bit nicer because there's no point in me making this beautiful lid if it's going to look good, well, if it's going to work well enough as is. Right, so that's the theory. Now what we need to do is we need to see if it actually works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some tests I'm going to get the heat mat on, I'm going to get the temperature up, and I'm just going to time it, and I'm going to just do a few bits and bobs. I'll record some of it, I won't record other bits. And we'll just see, if there's any percentage of moisture being removed at any point, then it's a win for me. You know, it, it doesn't have to get it to 0% moisture. I doubt I'll ever be able to do that anyway. But just getting some of it out, because as I say, um, I, I'm get, being left with lots of like staining and stuff on the wood. Some of it is obviously natural because it's a laser, but other bits get worse and worse as the um, the wood gets older and older or more and more moist, let's say. Right, let's get some testing done. Right, it's been about 20 minutes and we're up a degree-ish and we're up to 62% humidity. I still won't put the fan on yet. I'll see what it's like um, in probably another 20 minutes. No, I didn't forget, you forgot, so, ah. Anyway, 
Right, it's on 70% humidity and 25.9, so it's gone up significantly. Um, so what I'm gonna do in the next time, I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer just to make sure that it's definitely getting, doing what I want. I will then shove the fan on. Right, it's been another amount of time. I'm not sure when I lasted it. It's not been too, too long. Um, and it's still relatively the same, I believe. I believe that was already still on 70. But let's get the fan on now and let's see if we can get the actual um, moisture content down. Due to this just being a test, I am literally just going to be placing the fan there. I can't be bothered to do any sort of messing about with it. Also, I'm going to be magnetizing these so that they it does the, its fan work for me. There you go, perfect over the hole, perfect, perfect. And let's just move it along. Now I'm gonna leave this going and hopefully this number will just start to go down. Hey, that literally, I haven't, I haven't even gone anywhere. I didn't even step backwards, well I sort of did. This is gonna work, literally. Like, let me put my cam, uh, my phone here, still on the timer, just so you can see that I'm not like fast forwarding anything. It won't do it now. Yeah, see. I can't believe that. I cannot believe how well this has worked. Okay, so it seems to have got sort of stuck around the 60 mark. So what I might do is shift it back, let the, let the temperature get up again and do the same again. See what happens. I'll leave it a couple more minutes and just see. See if it goes down anymore. Uh, talk of the devil. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna leave it then. The, um, the moisture content in this room at the moment is probably around 55 and they were obviously very, very moist at the time. So I noticed that the temperature has only gone down by 0.1 of a degree as well. Right, it hasn't gone down and it's been at least three minutes. So I'll turn the fan off. And I will just move it across again so that the hole is out of the way. There you go. And now I'm just gonna leave it to hopefully get a lot, lot more moisture in the air from the heat and then do it all again. And I'd like to get this down as low as possible. I don't know how low I can get it, but I'm gonna blink and try. Okay, so it's been possibly two hours since I last did it, and we're down to 46, which means we are 14, 17% uh, below. No, that's not right, is it? 7%, uh, what an idiot. So we're 7% below ambient temperature, uh, ambient uh, moisture levels. Um, so I think this is definitely going to work. So now I have to decide how I'm going to put this together. If I'm going to do a timer for the motor, uh, for the fan, if I'm going to make it solar powered, I'm not entirely sure. But um, we'll do some testing on the wood next and we'll see how and if that makes any difference at all. Right, so I've decided I am going to use this as the final lid. And what I've done is I've drawn around the actual box and I'm going to saw it out. I'm going to sand down the edges, make it all look nice, and then I'm going to do a recess on the bottom so that it'll actually sink into, just by a couple of mil, into the box so that once the lid's on, it's stuck there, and then I might actually make some sort of seal. Also, I found an 18650 battery holder, but it's a very, very cheap one from China from years ago, and it's not working, so I'm going to have to solder some actual wires to it. There's a, a loose connection somewhere in this wire, so I'll just have to resolder it. But that's not a problem, but that'll be start, the start of the fan housing, whatever I'm doing with that, I haven't decided yet. Okay, so this is where we are at the moment. I've cut off the little notches and it fits literally like a glove. Well, with less fingers. And it's quite difficult to actually, it's got quite a nice friction fit. Um, so next I want to sand this down because I'm going to paint it and I'm going to make it look a bit, a bit better than it does now. Okay, sand it down, ouch, and I'm just going to paint it with some black house paint.
Right, next I'd like to go away and design something to hold the um, moisture sensor and the fan. Um, I'll do it so it's something laser cuttable and, you know, it won't be ideal, but it will work and that's all I care about. And then I'll jazz it up by giving it a bit of paint. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. Um, next then I would like to sort out the 18650 battery connected to a switch and to the fan. I had thought about making it solar powered so I could have a little solar panel, you know, a little 6 volt, 12 volt jobby. But I can't be bothered, I'm just going to have it all 18650 batteries because I actually charge them through solar anyway. So it's just, you know, it would have just been cutting out the middleman almost. It's just going to be a very, very simple um, bit of soldering and having a switch between it. So basically all you need to do is get up to either the moisture level you want or temperature you want depending on how it goes you know it's going to take a bit of experimentation but then once it's up to there and you want to get rid of the moisture flip the switch and off it goes it's pretty impressive for such a small fan to be honest how much that pumps out but easy cheese now I'm pretty proud of it right there you go uh, it's nothing spectacular, but it works and it looks okay. Um, since I've made this, now um, this was about a week ago I'd finished making it, but um, I've been drying other things in it. Uh, Crystal's been working on a few projects where she's been using PVA glue, and I found that, you know, it worked really well for drying out the PVA glue. So if you mo model makers out there or whatever need something to dry it, it works really, really well at just as like a drying chamber for projects of other kinds. So don't just think about it as a wood drying box. It will dry many other things too. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, please do that. I'd really appreciate it. But I'll see you again next week.